suggestion to bundle those performance expectations and sort of isolate them. Um, we'll, I'll, I'll throw this again out to, to any of you. How, how does that change teaching when we're asking teachers to bundle those things and not isolate them? And what does that discussion tend to look like with, with the teachers? Well, from my perspective, I, I go back to um, a, a, something that Dr. Pruitt used to say, Stephen Pruitt used to say when he was in Georgia and we had new performance standards. And that's that we want our students to do science and not view science. So uh, when we think about scientists in the field, we, we, while they might be a biologist or a chemist, they can't be isolated and, and only consider what is part of their field. If, if they need to consider something that's a part um, of physical science and they're a biologist, they just do that seamlessly. So we want our students to think that way and not to, to just think along the lines, this year I'm taking life science and I can't consider physical science or I can't consider engineering. We want them to, to think about the concepts that go across all the disciplines. And I think that's one of the conversations that teachers are um, appreciating as they're getting um, information from various resources. And I certainly um, recommend, I've been recommending this to teachers and it's had good reception that if they're looking for ways to consider um, what NGSS will look like for them to go to the NSTA website at nsta.org and, and look at the NGSS at NSTA portal that's there and, and the wide variety of resources. Okay. Uh, w one of the things that Drew was asking is how they're connected. Science is very cyclical. Um, and you, we all know that you keep coming back around to the same concepts over and over again and learning about them in a deeper and deeper nature. And I, the nice thing, I, you know, I think about those, um, what we're now referring to as the uh, cross-cutting concepts, those used to be, I used to call those the big ideas. Um, because we could teach around a big idea and you could pull in all types of uh, science content. If you talked, uh, just like Drew's example around patterns early on, or Jennifer's. Um, if you look at a big idea and you teach from that I, that specific cross-cutting um, concept, you can pull in all of the many, especially at the middle school level and probably the elementary. Uh, um, I know we get more specific as we move into high school around, you know, we're doing chemistry now, but I think if we do a lot of that as we move into the to be, I used to yeah, let me jump. Let me jump in on a couple okay. of things here. Uh, I I totally get what you're saying about the the, the cross cutting concepts. In fact, I had an interesting conversation with a couple of elementary teachers there last meeting, and Kentucky adopted the topic version of the standards. So we kind of have a little bit of sort of built-in guidance, and they're not just listed by DCI. They're actually grouped by topics, which are a, a kind of a logical way to think about bundling or focusing instruction, but uh, at the conversation, that there's no reason that if they so desired an elementary teacher couldn't structure their year around seven units, and those seven units be headed by those seven cross-cutting concepts. And uh, just piggybacking on this idea of patterns, I mean, think about how powerful that is to start looking for patterns in math while you're looking for patterns in science. And patterns in social studies, things like patterns of human migration, patterns of settlement, patterns of civilization development, uh, geographical patterns, weather patterns. Uh, there are so many things that those seven cross-cutting concepts could incorporate to make seven really dynamite units. But now that's that's thinking that elementary teachers are familiar with. That's thinking that a self-contained middle or high school teacher uh, probably doesn't come to naturally. Uh, I, as probably a middle not. school teacher, only came to it after having been uh, stationed, I suppose is the word, in the elementary school for a year. And uh, I sort of learned to see things through that thematic lens that I wouldn't have seen before. But to circle back to Drew's original question about the configuration, the NGSS document in and of itself has some helper documents that follow it along. And there are a number of appendices, and one of the appendices illustrates the progression 
of the uh, science and engineering practices from K through 12. There's another that does the same for engineering, another for the DCIs, and another for uh, the cross-cutting concepts. And all of those appendices really should almost be considered an integral part of the document. Because if you're thinking about mapping instruction from the beginning of a student's school experiences to the end, the appendices are incredibly valuable to take that long view and get a sense of how any particular idea progresses from when a student first encounters it coming into kindergarten as to how it would look as an exit expectation for high school. So don't forget the appendices.